So please, your grace, my ancient, a man is of honesty and trust. To his conveyance I will assign my wife. With what else needful your good grace shall think to be sent after me. Let it be so. Good night to everyone, and noble senor. If virtue no delighted beauty lack, your son-in-law is more fair than black. I do, brave more, use testimony well. Look to her more, if thou hast eyes to see. She deceived her father, and made thee. My life upon her faith. My noble lord. What dost thou say, Iago? Did Michael Cassio, when you wooed your lady, know of your love? Uh, he did, from first to last. Why dost thou ask? So for a satisfaction of my thought, no further harm. Why of thou thought, Iago? Did not think he had been acquainted with it. Uh, he did. He went between us very oft. Indeed. Aye, indeed. Discernest thou aught in that is to be not honest? Honest, my lord? Honest, aye, honest. Think, my lord. And what's he, then, that says I play the villain? When this advice is free, I give an honest, probable to thinking, and indeed the course to win the more again. For tis most easy the inclining Desdemona to subdue in any honest suit. She's framed as fruitful as the free elements, and then for her to win the more, weren't to renounce his baptism, all seals and symbols of his redeemed sin. His soul is so, and fettered to her love, that she may make, unmake, do what she list, even as her appetite shall play the god, weak with his function. How am I then a villain? To counsel Cassio to this parallel course directly to his good, Divinity of hell, when devils will, will the blackest sins put on, they do suggest at first with heavenly shows, as I do now. For whiles this honest fool pl pleads Desdemona to repair his fortune, and she for him pleads strongly to the more. I'll pour this pestilence into his ear, that she repeals him for her body's lust, and by how much she strives to do him good. She shall undo her credit with the more. So will I turn her virtue into pitch, and out of her own goodness make the net that shall enmesh them all. Peace and be still! I will so, what's the matter? That handkerchief which I love so, and gave thee, thou gavest to Cassio! No, but by my life and soul, send for the man and ask him. Sweet soul, take heed, take heed of perjury, thou art on thy deathbed. Aye, but not yet to die. Yes, presently. Therefore confess thee freely of thy sin. For to deny each article with oath, cannot remove nor choke the strong conception that I do groan withal. Thou art to die. Then, Lord, have mercy on me. I say amen. And have you mercy too? I never did offend you in my life, never, never loved Cassio. But with a, such general warranty of heaven as I might love, I never gave him token. By heaven, I saw my chanker handkerchief in his hand. O oh, perjured woman, thou dost stone my heart, and makest me call what I intended to do, a murder, which I thought a sacrifice. I saw the handkerchief. He found it then. I never gave it to him. Send for him hither. Let him confess a truth. He hath confessed! 
What, my lord? <sighs> that he has done you. How? Unlawfully. I... He will not say so. No, his mouth is stopped. Honest, Iago. Haha, <laughs> take an order for it. Oh, my fear interprets. What is... Is he dead? Had all his hairs been lives, my great revenge had stomach for them all. Alas, he is betrayed, and I undone. <laughs> Out, strumpet! Weepest thou for him to my face? Oh, banish me, my lord, but not, but kill me not. Down, strumpet! Oh, kill me tomorrow, let me live tonight. Nay, if you strive. But half an hour? <sighs> Being done, there is no. But while I say one prayer, it's too late. Um. So, Mikey Brockman, in the video Othello, you um you portray the black man Othello. What were your struggles about? portraying that um character through the film well obviously i am a white actor and that 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 made it a little, a little harder i couldn't i couldn't adjust as easily as i thought i would be able to um people people didn't understand why a white man would be playing othello as he was such a big character because of his race but it was just a choice that the directors made and it's a new spin on things so it was hard but i adjusted uh, secondly, um, what's your take on Othello as a character? I think that he is, he's corrupt. He's corrupted by what's around him. He's too honest. He's too trusting. He, he doesn't have a great sense of people, like, who he should put his faith in. He's flawed in several ways. But he's also a very strong, built character, very well developed course of the film it was very fun acting and finally um what, what's your take on your acting like what'd you bring to the table through the character of, of Othello I mean with, with the garbage I was presented with with Desdemona's portrayal I kind of had to amp up what I was a hundred percent and I gave it my all out there for the team you know the team went great victory and that's just that's just how I wanted it to be I was trying to portray the best Othello I thought I could, and I think I did that at the end. I don't know. You tell me. Ha-ha. You're going to be seeing it. All right. Well, thank you. No, thank you. Have a nice day. So, Ryan Bowman, you acted as uh, Iago in this film. What was it like being such an iconic villain? You know, it's kind of weird because... Growing up, I never wanted to be the villain, you know, you watch those movies and you're always rooting for the good guys, so it's weird being on the other side, but I grew to like it towards the end of the movie because, I mean, look at all the great villains out there. You got the Joker, you got Bane, just going by Batman there, but villains are villains, and I think I played the role best I could, and I really liked it. Do you think of him as a villain personally, or? I think he's a little more messed up than a villain. He, he just has one goal, and that's all he's going for, and he doesn't stop for that, no matter who gets in his way. So, something wrong with him, more than I would call him a villain. Yeah, we all, uh, we all got those goals, I guess. So, do you, do you have any sympathy for the character, Iago, or do you... No, I, I don't. He, he, he has no good intentions throughout the whole play. It's just self-benefit, and his self-benefit doesn't really help anyone, so... After Heath Ledger's portrayal of the Joker, the world the world really saw villains, especially villains like Iago, because I'd consider them to be kind of the same, would you? I'd look at it in the same way as in they both have one person that they want to take over or kill, in Heath Ledger's case, but uh, it's only similar in that one way because it's so easy for a villain to go after one person, but then they end up destroying everything else, so. Yeah, well. As I was saying, do you, did you pull anything from his portrayal of the Joker? Like, yeah. any uh, choices? I, I, I don't think I did, no. I, I think it, it's, it's different movies, so it's hard. 
All right, thank you for uh, meeting with me today. No problem. Thank you for meeting with me today, Brendan Keaty. How did it feel playing the woman in Othello? You know, I'm not going to say it was my favorite role that I've ever been hired for, but I feel like as soon as I put on the wig, I portrayed the character very well. I would say you did, sir. And do you think this is the role you were born for? Do you think you have a higher ground to peek to? I think I have more to offer for yeah. my career. I certainly hope so. Anyways, let's talk more about the other actors in the film. Mikey Brockman portrayed Othello. Pretty handsome devil, wouldn't you say? I'm not really going to say that, but he was fun to work with, and I hope I can work with him again. Thank you. Um, I guess that's all for today. Thank you for the interview. Nice meeting with Thank you. you. So Liam Sullivan and Jake Frackwitz, you two were the directors and costume designers of Othello, the the movie coming out soon, the masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Some would call. Some maybe all would call. Anyways, so what what struggles did you guys have with the filming? Uh, Jake, I'm gonna ask you first. Um. Well, Desdemona's character was portrayed by Brendan Cady, as many of us know, and um, Ooh, that's rough. I would say. He was probably our biggest issue as a group, like, whenever we were trying to really just, like, get some work done in a short period of time, he was always just, like, killing the vibe, and I don't know, yeah. there's something about him, but it, I think... It took him a long time to get into character as well. Yeah. He, he would just be, like, we would be on set all ready to go, but he's like, wait, wait, guys, I gotta get into character. Yeah. And that would just take, like, it was really 30 minutes, and then, to the, to the, I don't know, it slowed down our process, but yeah. we got it out. Got everything done, and we'll come to you in theater soon. A teen Vogue has named him the largest diva of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, does this surprise either of you? Uh, no. Starting with Liam this time. No. All right. Straight no. Not at all. I can't. Brandon Katie is the definition <laughs> of a diva. Yeah. Uh, no, what what landed him the role in this movie, Jake, if I could ask you? Um, I think you have to say luck. It's gotta be luck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was slim pickings, really, but... Uh, we were yeah, trying to luck. get an actor, a male actor, that could film that kind of role, so... We Not, wanted to do what yeah. Shakespeare did back yeah. way back then, only use male actors. So, so That's kind of genius. Yeah. yeah hey, we, and you had, you had to find a man that was <laughs> so low that he'd play a woman? Yeah, and Brendan Cady was the one and only. I, I feel that. Well, thank you both for your time. Uh, thank that, you. That, that concludes the directing portion. How about, how about for the costume designing portion of the uh, film? I, I noticed a staff um, at, at one point in the film. The Duke had a staff. Uh, yeah, it was like... Oh, well, there it is. Uh, yeah. well, it's uh, actually a collector's much. item. A collector's item. You can item. buy it in your, I guess, nearby Toys R Us for fifteen ninety nine. Probably not, but okay. <laughs> but um, you see... You see the staff. It, um, it's supposed to represent power. Power. In the um, in the film, because the Duke was supposed to be above everybody, and he, we wanted to show his power. And also, there is a snake emblem at the top of the staff, which is kind of representative of uh, Iago's manipulation and his snaky behavior. I understand that. Um, so the the wigs that were used, they were. Uh, I don't know what to say about them, but but they uh they seemed like uh, almost as if their main purpose was to annoy the woman and male actors that had to wear them. Would you agree? Maybe irritate them for the scenes they had to be in. Yeah. Um, I really thought a good way to get uh, Desdemona's out uh, emotions out was to make her uncomfortable. So, mm -hmm. um, thinking about that, that's where we went. By giving um, Brendan the, the scratchier the better. Yeah. Thank you. We're gonna end right on that note. Um, thank you both for coming in. Yeah, Always a pleasure. You. Good thank luck you. with your next thank project. You.